personal renavigation. I'd like to welcome you to the third service. And if you're here for the first time, is our leadership and economic development service. And in this service, we're teaching you to build capacity in the area of leadership, personal development, and finances. So that's what this is about. So today I'll be speaking on personal renavigation. Personal renavigation. You are very likely to succeed faster if you have a clear definition of where you want to go. There are too many people who want to succeed, but they don't know what success is. Like, what's your definition of success? I want to succeed. What do you mean? What exactly do you mean by I want to succeed? For some people, when they say I want to succeed, they just simply mean that they want uh, food, food to flow. Like, they don't have issues with eating. Morning, afternoon, evening, or at least morning and evening every day, they can buy food and eat when they want. That's their definition of success. What really is success? Take my first statement. I said you're very likely to succeed faster if you have a clear definition of where you prefer to go. And then I followed up by saying you have to be able to define what success is and weigh it against what we're talking about right now and realize that that's not really success. Then you have to redefine it. Success is beyond food. Success is beyond money. To have money is good. To be able to eat with ease, that's great. For some Okay. <laughs> the true definition of success is the extent to which your life's purpose, assignment, and significance progresses. Everything else is secondary. So the true definition of success is the extent to which your life's purpose, assignment, and significance progresses. You can't truly define success if you don't understand what your purpose and assignment is. Because genuine success, success that is lasting, is connected to your purpose and assignment. That's the safest place to take the bearing of success from. If it's just money, oh, you want money. After you make money, what? And how much? And how much? So when you have five million in your bank account, can you say you have truly succeeded? Is that it? Will your life stop there, end there? Money is never an end by itself. It is supposed to be a means to an end. Money is never an end by itself. It is supposed to be a means to an end. Hear me and hear me clearly. If you have a lot of money and have no purpose for that money, it is very likely to destroy you. Yes. If you have a lot of money but really don't have the, a purpose for the money that you have, it is very likely, very likely to destroy you. So number one, define where you want to go. Where I want to go must take bearing from what my purpose and assignment are. What do you determine to be your purpose and assignment? If you don't know it yet, let it be something you believe you need to find out. Let it be something you have to start searching out. Because success that will last will take its bearing from our purpose and our assignments. You are not significant unless your purpose begins to bear fruit. Your true significance is measured by the extent to which your purpose bears fruit. Money can help you pursue your assignment. Money can help you 
pursue your purpose. Money can help you execute things connected to your life's essence. Money by itself is not an end. It should be a means to an end. Money is safer in your hands when it is a means to an end. So that you don't just live for money. You don't just make money. And even people whose assignment is to make money, you will realize that they are to make money for something. God will still tell them what they are supposed to be a part of. Oh, yes. God will tell them what they are supposed to be a part of. God will put certain things in their hearts that that money is supposed to sponsor. Number three, if you're going to succeed, you have to grow. I learned some time ago that you will keep going if you keep growing. Stagnation is usually a symptom of a prolonged absence of growth. Stagnation is usually a symptom of a prolonged absence of growth. You will keep going if you keep growing. You will keep going if you keep growing. Are you growing? You can add age, but you're not growing. You can have birthdays, but not growth days. Are you growing? What are signs that you're growing? I'll give you a few. You're growing when your thinking changes. When you stop thinking like you used to think, your thinking changes. You're growing when your priorities begin to be repositioned and realigned. So growth will affect thought. Growth will affect your priorities. You are growing when your productivity increases. So you're growing when you're more productive. When you're more productive. You are growing when your ability to solve certain problems improves. So the things that used to terrify you no longer terrify you. Things you used to do with difficulty, you now do with ease because you have grown. Another sign of growth is emotional stability. Some things that will just destabilize you, you'll be depressed, you won't be able to eat. Now you just laugh over them. Because you are bigger than them. You've grown, you've outgrown them. You've outgrown them. You have grown when your knowledge base is expanded. You have grown when your knowledge base is expanded. Another sign of growth is the ability to create solutions. You have grown when you have new ideas on how to solve problems. When you have new ideas on how to solve problems. Another sign of growth is skill upscaling or upgrading or updating. When your ability grows, when your skill, let's say you have a skill and you have improved on that skill, you've added knowledge to that skill, you can, you can perform uh, more complex tasks. You have grown that skill to where you can perform more complex, uh, complex tasks. Then you've grown. Because now you've moved from solving simple problems to solving complex problems. Did you know that we are all paid in accordance to the kinds of problems that we solve? People who solve simple problems are paid small money. People who solve complex tasks are paid big money. So you have grown when you have upgraded your skills to where you can now solve more complex tasks. Growing responds to planning. 
growing response to planning. You can know about growing and never grow. Growing response to planning. How do you plan your growth? You set your target, what you want to achieve. Before I entered 2024, I told myself what I wanted to achieve. I looked at myself and I talked about the person I want to be in 2024. I clearly defined what person I want to see of myself in 2024. I went an inch deeper to asking myself what kinds of diet I would need to feed from to be that kind of person. I also determined from day one aggressively that I was going to consume and consume and consume as part of my responsibility for bringing to birth that person that I have envisaged in my mind's eye. So like I said in the first service, I, I think it was in the first service, I said I had a target for 10 books for January. I didn't hit my target, but I read eight. I read eight. I have this month to try to make up. I mean, I keep pushing like that. I keep pushing like that. What I read in one month is what some people have read in five years. Unfortunately. Oh yeah. There are people who don't read. How are you going to sell? When you open your mouth, are people going to run away or people are going to bow? The wise man said the moment you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. And it is true. Because every time we open our mouth, we expose our heads. Every time you open your mouth, you expose your head. What I mean is every time you talk, you tell to what extent you have invested in your mind. You can't talk things that you have not first invested in. Life is beyond sleeping, eating, sleeping, wearing nice clothes, looking good before the mirror, walking out, going in and going out. No! Start thinking like a leader. Start thinking like a ruler. Start thinking like someone who can solve problems. Start thinking like someone who can consult. Start thinking like someone whose ideas have value. Don't just exist. Be a significant entity. Be a significant entity. It means your presence in a system makes significant impact. Your absence from a system also clearly shows a deficiency. Will you be missed if you left your job? What will they miss if they will miss you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Growth requires diligence. Growth requires diligence. Listen to me, everybody. There is no place at the top for the lazy. No place at the top with people who have perfected the arts of excuses. No place at the top. No place at the top. No place. Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings and not before mean men. He shall stand before kings and not before mean men. So the Bible clearly gives us the recipe for doing business with kings or doing high profile business. Look, if this was a chart and this is the point zero, and this way is minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this way is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The kings are this way. The mean men are that way. This is where you are usually at point zero. 
But he's telling you that diligence moves you this way. Increases your value. You're paid more, paid more, paid more, paid more, paid more. This way, when there's a deficiency of knowledge, deficiency of wisdom, mean men, mean men, mean men, mean men. One king can pay you what a million mean men put together will not be able to pay you. You can plan to fail by doing nothing about your life. Don't envy anyone who's successful. I mean, who's genuinely successful. There are many people who are genuinely successful. Everybody isn't a thief. It's not everyone who is doing this and doing that. Lazy people like to think like that. Do something about your life. This is the recipe. The recipe is never easy. This is February already. It's the second month of a brand new year that has never existed. Tell me one book you have read this year. One book. In my life, I've read hundreds upon hundreds of books because I'm determined to be a master in whatever it is that I do. So tomorrow, I speak in a place and I get paid thousands of dollars to do one session of speaking, if you're wondering, what are they even doing that we are not doing? I've read eight. By the next few months, I would have read tens of books just this year alone, upgrading my ability to solve problems, repositioning my resourcefulness, loading up my relevance bank, and I have the globe opening up to me, to speak in different parts of the world. Someone is going to sit there and wonder, you know, what are they doing? What are they doing? I'm telling you what we are doing now. Pick up a book and read it. Pick up a book and read it. You have the ability to read. It is up to you. Maybe your priorities are, are just not right. You have to reposition your priorities. Ask yourself where you want to go. Take one book and read it. Take one book. Conquer it. Every time I pick up a book, I sleep. Hey, get up and walk. Read it walking. Open it. Introduction. This book is about read it, walk, pace your house. You can't have time for everything else and not have time to improve on who you are. The future is always loaded with opportunities. But opportunities only respond to people who are properly prepared who are properly prepared. The biggest mistake you would think is that your face is enough to open doors. Someone can be attracted to your face, but they will stay with your value. Oh yeah? Listen. A face that looks good Carrying a mind that looks bad will eventually become an embarrassment to the person who has drawn you close. So it's okay that your face looks good. Now make your mind look great. Make your mind look great. Stop thinking that you qualify for favor just because you look nice. That's a lie. Any favor that is limited to how someone looks outwardly is usually favor that is not from God. If that favor is limited to only outward looks, it is favor that will satisfy someone's selfishness. It is not favor from God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yes, your face can attract, but let your mind carry the kind of resourcefulness that can solve problems and, and, you know, hold the grounds in the place where you have been given opportunities. Read a book. You may not be busier than myself. I promise you in this life that you, you, you may not be busier than myself. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. That's why you're not ready. No, it's not true. You've not made it a priority. Look at your life, spiritually. 
Invest in it. Read books from people that God has blessed with insight in spiritual development. Read books on finances. Read books on leadership. Read books on interpersonal relations. One of the highest skills, one of the highest leadership skills to possess is the ability to relate with people. Let me shock you. After all said and done, success will always be a product of an opportunity somebody else has given you. Because it doesn't matter how loaded you are, how much skill you have, how much resourcefulness you have, how much you carry on the inside. If nobody gives you an opportunity to express it, it will die with you. It will die with you. So the ability to relate to people matters a lot. If you're going to know how to relate, you have to know how to use your mouth. There are people who are nasty, nasty pro mark. Discipline your tongue. You can't talk to people anyhow, no matter how angry you are. Train yourself to relate properly with people. It's a training you give yourself. There's a book by... Who wrote the book, How to Win customers and keep them for life. Uh, it's not Michael Leboeuf. Uh, it's, it's a popular book. Look for it. Who? Is it Michael Leboeuf? No. Is it? It's Michael Leboeuf, right? Okay. So, I was right. So, Michael Leboeuf. Michael and Leboeuf is L-E-B-O-E-U-F. Okay. So, how to, how to win customers and keep them for life. Then there's a book by John Maxwell, uh, Be a People's Person. It's an old book, but very powerful. How to be a people person. There's an art with which to relate. There's an art with which to keep relationships. There are protocols to relate with people who have gone ahead of you. Why people miss opportunities, let me take a few minutes and say this. Sometimes it's because God opens you a door, you have access to someone who's an important person, you don't know how to relate to them. You don't know how to relate to them. There are protocols. And some people don't have manners at all. You need to learn your manners. When you meet people who have gone ahead, be respectful. Be respectful. Learn it. Don't go and tell the governor, sir, please, can you follow me on YouTube? You guys are acting surprised. I People say things to me that surprise me. I'm like, there was nobody to ever, oh God. What happened to you telling your friends to follow you on YouTube? Or someone steals my WhatsApp number and sends a link and says, uh, please support me, follow me on YouTube. Or I'm contesting for this and that and that. Vote for me. You don't have respect. Th that is the truth. You don't have respect. You want to reduce your spiritual father to voting. Have you finished telling your friends? So you see, once you have access and begin to abuse it, the access begins to die a natural death. I'm calling. They are not answering me. I'm texting. They are not responding. Go and search yourself. You have not behaved well. When you call somebody twice, maximum twice, and they don't pick, stop. If it's an emergency, Send a text. 
Even if it's not an emergency, but you need to reach them. Send a message. You can call a very busy person 10 times. 26 times. And when you call back, what is the problem? You'll be shocked what the question will be. Nothing serious at all. I just saw you passing. <laughs> you call somebody 20 times. That's abuse of access. Abuse of access. Abuse of access. You want to be taken serious. There are certain things you should do. And you see, sometimes I'm amazed. Strangers call, and I'm wondering how they got my number. I say, oh, your church member, I gave it to me. Very bad. Very bad. You don't do that. Just because you have it, you take upon yourself the ministry to spread it. <laughs> I wish you were spreading the good news instead of my number. <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 that's not right. Security reasons, bad. Ethically speaking, bad. And if you think someone needs to have that number for some special reason, seek permission first. Seek permission first. Can you keep relationships? If you had access to the presidency today, do you know how to maintain relationships at that level? Do you know how to conduct yourself? How to comport yourself? Go and learn how to relate because it's one of the biggest keys for lasting success. How to relate. How to relate. How to relate to people at your level. How to relate to people who are higher than you and how to relate to people who are coming behind you. Learn how to relate. Never walk casually into the presence of a king. Guard your tongue when you're in the presence of a king. I'm going to tell the king, please like my page on Facebook. What happened to your neighbors, compound mates, classmates? And your friends. Don't forget to like my page. Oh. So the response is. That's all. That's the response. If you can keep relationships, you will go very far very far. Learn how to keep relationships. Like I said, if you have access to people higher than you, keep it respectful. Make them know you value them. You, you can't have an appointment. You've shown up in that office with 15 other people. Uninvited. Ah, they said they want to see you. I said, I'm coming to see you. They said they want to see you. Uh, come, enter, enter, enter. Enter. <laughs> Just sit up and see 15 people in your office. One person had an appointment, 15 others followed. What should have been a better way to do it? Let me show you. If 15 people were going to come with you, let them wait wherever they can wait. Finish your appointment and respectfully mention. If he or she is willing and available to speak with them, they will be invited in. If not, it will be greet them and stop there. Don't say, ah, they must see you. <laughs> no, 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 you can't, you can't insist. If they are willing to see those people who have come with you, that's fine. But it's their prerogative to do so. You can't, you can't, you can't abuse access. You can't abuse access. 
or you come into the presence of a king, you start talking carelessly, just walking about their office and just searching things, carrying things. Ah, uh, your time is up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number one. What? Number two, another statement. Just tell me. Yeah, next thing. <laughs> uh huh? Your true significance is measured by the extent to which your purpose bears fruits. Another statement. You need to keep going. Huh? Keep upgrading your skills. Somebody else? And I know the university you went to, even the primary school. <laughs> Somebody else? Growth requires diligence. Again, somebody. What? Growing responds to planning. The future is loaded with opportunities, but opportunities open up to people who are properly prepared, well prepared. Somebody else? Anything more? Every time you open your mouth, you expose your head. Money is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. Can you may? Sorry? When your productivity increases, what happens? <laughs> the statement is not complete. Oh, okay, signs of growth. Yes, so graded. What else did I say? When your problem... Okay, when your ability to solve certain problems improves. Emotional stability is also a sign of growth. When your knowledge base is expanded. Lady with the heart. Looks like... The last hat the Queen of England wore before she died. <laughs> Growth requires diligence. Your value is, well, <laughs> I said your face can attract, but your value keeps. Because if a nice face comes and exposes a bad mind, then that person becomes a liability to the system. So your face can attract, which is okay, but your value keeps. Let's close this. So every individual has a unique race, and every race has its pace. Okay, so you're not just going to be competing with others. You're not going to compete with others. You're going to understand your race. You're also going to manage your pace, your pace of growth, your pace of progression. You can be inspired by somebody else's race and pace, but don't just copy and paste. Understand the requirements of your race and submit yourself to the exercises needed for growth. Determine what your priorities are, especially at this season in your life, and focus on them. Growth is progressive. What are your priorities now, at this stage of your life? You see, if I asked... Many people say, oh, money. I just need money. I just need money is not what you need. I didn't say money is not good. But that's not the most important thing you need right now. If I give you one million naira and you've not grown your knowledge base, your perspective has not shifted, your mindset has not improved, look, I just need to give you a little time. You will go back to where you were. Because you will spend on the wrong things. You will take the wrong actions that align with your current level of thinking. Somehow, you will 
find your way back to where you were before you received the money. Because everything rises and falls to the quality of your mentality. Everything rises and falls to the quality of your mentality. What you need the most now is to grow. Once you grow, you will do better things with money. You'll be more intelligent in the management of the gifting and the opportunities that you have. When you grow, focus more on growing and you will not have a challenge with earning. Focus on growing and you position yourself for gaining. Focus on growing and you position yourself for gaining. I'm teaching you something. Simple, but can change your life this year. If you take this lesson just as it has come, simple as it is, if you would apply the things that have been shared, they are so simple. But these things are so simple that they are easily neglected. So let's not just say, I'm growing, I'm going to grow. No. Grow in what direction? That's why I said you must predetermine where you want to go. And then look for what you need to feed on. So for this picture you have on your mind, what do you need to do? And you see, if I was going to add a closing thought, I will say get mentorship. Because some people, they just exist by themselves. There's nobody to advise you. Nobody, to, you can ask questions. Nobody, and it's the way you have positioned yourself. It's not because the people are, are, not, are not available. You have not made yourself available for that kind of thing. Ask questions. These things are not rocket science, and it doesn't matter where you are in your life. There's always a place where you can start. How do I go from here? How can I start from here? How can I start from here? Some of you need to enroll in a trade this year because of where you're going. Enroll in a trade. Enroll in a trade. Someone has read mechanical engineering and you like to have the finest automobile service station. Huh. It doesn't come by wearing, wearing suits. Go and look for the best mechanic workshop in town and attach yourself. Oh, you didn't hear what I said? Yep. Look for the best workshop in town. Attach yourself. If, if you've heard of one somewhere that is very good, maybe Lagos, go and attach yourself there. Oh, there's one in Abuja. You've heard. Keep upgrading your skills. You are learning many things at the same time. Because you can study mechanical engineering and not be able to drop the engine of a car. Did you know that? Yes. Yes. So go get your hands dirty. Get under the car. Unscrew some stuff. Learn how to fix a car. Learn about the parts of a car. And then when you set up a workshop, there are other things you have to learn. Right? Procurement. Record keeping, accounting. <laughs> okay, conflict management, yes. Staffing, how to hire and fire. There's several things to learn if you're going to run that system. And there is a lot of money in running a workshop. A lot of money. When I mean a lot, I'm talking of a lot, lot, lot. Plenty money, especially if you set it up properly, like a proper service station, where you begin to have big clients. Hey, that is a fortune. But how much do you know about it? Your certificate in engineering will not help you. It's just a starting point. And you see, with that certificate and the theoretical knowledge that you got in school, and the practical knowledge, you now have an advantage over the regular guy who's just doing it on the streets. 
you might learn from them and become better than them because of your background. Because of your background. What do you need to learn this year? Who do you need to speak to? Get mentorship. Get mentorship. Every day you're trusting God for money, trusting God for money. Look, uh, you have to start growing. You have to start growing. There's something wrong with your uh, value system. You have to start growing. Get under mentorship. Be accountable to someone. Some people are crafty. When they don't want to be accountable, they start being evasive. I traveled. They're in town. And even if they travel, they probably traveled for three days. Or you've not seen them for six months. But they'll hang on. I traveled. Then when you see them, I just came back. <laughs> or like the other guy I saw that day, he said, mm, I'm not really steady. I'm in and out. Uh, uh, help yourself. Can we rise? Before the next class, start a book. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. You're learning free in a class things that we get paid big money to teach outside of church. So take it seriously. That's my point. This is your life here. It's not mine. It's your life. Show some seriousness. Take it personal. How many people standing here want to be very successful? No, just sincerely. If you haven't decided yet, don't be in a hurry. I can ask you another time. Seriously, I can ask you another time. But you want to be very successful. Genuinely, sincerely, very successful. I want to imagine that the hands that are half-masked, the hands that are like this are people who are not sure. Okay, now I have some people who are perfectly sure. And you're serious. Very serious. Okay, put your hands down. I can help you by teaching you the little that I know. Every time I sit with my mentors, I realize that it is wisdom distilled from maybe 40 years of their own learning and practice. So when I spend an hour with my teachers one hour I realized that I am learning in one hour things they have been learning the last 30 or 40 years what a privilege nobody succeeds by chance never make a mistake you know people like to explain the way things he is successful because you know, he talks very nice. So people, she's successful because, you know, she's so beautiful. So she's always having, you cannot explain away success. Success happens by intentional preparation. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to make yourself unavailable to some kinds of people in your life. So you can have time with yourself. This year, spend time with yourself. Spend time with yourself. I started the journey early. I started it early. And sincerely, the journey started after I gave my life to Christ at 16. I had mentorship. And I was serious about it. It's not the kind of mentorship. You are living the way you want to live. Your mentor will say this. You do the opposite. You are not in mentorship. You are in on serious ship. Just... You can sail away. <laughs> That's not mentorship. 
mentorship is you are willing to apply what you've been taught over a period of time so that you can see results in your life. You are not in a mentorship if you intentionally still live just the way you want to live. No! You're not. From 17, I had mentorship. It helped me because that's what exposed me to books. So from a young age, I started reading books. At 18, I was reading books. At 19, I always say it. At 19, I had grown to where I was doing an assessment of division so far. How far I have gone with, with the pursuit of my vision. And I realized I still had a lot of work to do because of where I was going. And that's the year at age 19, I said I read 24 books in six months. What determination. Nobody can see a bright future for you beyond how you can see it. I desire for everybody in this room to be highly successful. That's why I teach with passion what I teach. I like to teach what I know and has worked for me. We may look simple. But we're highly respected out there. Just so you know. We may look simple. But I've been speaking on four continents for quite a while in my life. We may look simple. But there are nations and places where people are just waiting to know the next time you'll be in. So that they create an event to suit you. You can't just pass like that. I just mentioned to a few people recently about, you know, places I'm going to be. Meetings are being set up. Not pre-planned. Just the knowledge that I'll be in Las Vegas. A meeting is set up. Knowledge that I'll be in, you know, Massachusetts. A meeting is set up. And in other, and in other places. That's called value. You can have it. I'm showing you how it works. I pray. Don't think I don't pray. I do. But it's not only prayer. If you pray with an empty head, there will be nothing for God to answer. God won't give you opportunities where you would disgrace him. He won't. So prayer must be matched by the responsibility of preparation. Moses, God used him mightily. But that man, the Bible tells us in the book of Acts 7 that he was learned in all the wisdom of Egypt. So you see, you see the man that God used to obstruct the system of a nation was someone who had learned about that system. He attended the Harvard of his day. You see, when he was adopted as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, this guy lived as a prince. He was adopted, so he was a prince in Egypt. He had access to the best teachers, the inventors. History tells us that Egypt was the cradle of civilization. You see the pyramids, you see the mummies. They already knew some things that anatomy has developed only in the last couple of years or well in the last uh, maybe few centuries. The Egyptians were already embalming bodies and preserving them like that. To this day there are Egyptian mummies preserved, bodies preserved that have not decayed. And it came, oh yeah. You've not heard about Egyptian mummies? Go back to your history books. Look at the pyramids. What kind of architectural knowledge and mathematical calculations do you think Produced pyramids that many are still there till today. There are still pyramids. There are still pyramids. Egyptian pyramids. So there was knowledge in that day. Moses was in the best of schools. The Harvard of his day. The MIT of his day. And when it was time to obstruct that system, God anointed him and sent him back to that system. Paul was a very learned man, a lawyer of no mean repute. He was so intelligent that Peter said, this man's words are difficult to understand. 
His words were deep and strong. That's the man who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. What do you think a dull brain will produce for God? Go and torch up yourself with knowledge and understanding. When you open your mouth, let there be fire. The fire of wisdom. Prayer can do many things. Part of my goal this year is to upgrade my prayer life. And I'm telling you, I'm taking very radical steps. Very radical steps. Very radical steps. I have special days this year. I call them six-hour prayer days. A quarter of the day in prayer. I believe in prayer. But prayer cannot conquer ignorance. Stop playing around. Stop following people who are going nowhere. You are too sentimentally attached to foolishness. You need to speak to yourself. If you don't want to go anywhere, it's your choice. It's your choice. It's your choice. But if you're going to rise, there's a price to pay. That's what you need now, the most in your life. Pay the price. Read like your life depends on it. Change your thinking. Change your company. Stop hanging around people, people who are thinking of how to cheat people, people thinking of how to sleep with someone's wife to get money, someone's husband. Come on. That's not sustainable. That's how you want to live in 2024. 2024. You are eyeing somebody's father. 2024. No. You are a gold mine. You are a diamond mine. Diamond mine. Invest in yourself. And the world will pay you. Do I have a witness in this house? Do I have a witness in this house? Let's succeed together. The next five, six, seven years, let's rule Africa. Let's take significant positions in Asia, in Australia, in Europe, in North America, in South America. When we hear about you, let it be something great. Let me blow my trumpet a little bit. That this church has exported great men and women to different parts of the world. Not one, not two, not ten, not even fifteen. These things are working. My prayer is that it will work for you. Amen. That you will take it seriously and commit yourself to it. So by the next class, make sure you're reading a book. Because I'm going to ask you the title. And don't miss the class because you're avoiding saying the title of a book. That is one of the... <laughs> if you cannot meet that target, if you cannot run, if you cannot run with uh, footmen, <laughs> how can you run with horses? May grace be upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have an offering, lift it up. The offerings are blessed. The tithes are blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give to honor you. Lord, we give because we love you. Lord, cause this thing.